Welcome to my channel. I know I've been gone for a couple days, three days, I guess. Uh, I apologize for that. I had things that I had to take care of. And among those was a book that I bought that I wanted to read immediately. And so I had to block out the time to do that. Um, as many of you know, I'm a Christian and I'm not shy about expressing my beliefs. And as I'm aware, there are some of you on my channel who are not Christians. You're atheists or some other religion. And if you're watching this video, then I would ask you to consider buying this book and reading it. And then when you're done, you can tell me if it's changed your mind. Because I believe it will. I've talked about this man before on my channel. His name is Jonathan Chan. Uh, I assume that's how it's pronounced. Can, excuse me. C-A-H-N. Can. And... Um, I know, I don't know a whole lot about him. I know that he has a ministry. Uh, I know that uh, he's written books. And I saw a video where he talked about this book and I thought, I need to get that. And boy, am I glad I did because this book is amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm being absolutely frank and honest with you when I tell you when I read this book, I was going, wow, every other page. Wow. Unbelievable. That's what I was going. I, I, I did that throughout the book. <clears throat> and so I'm going to do something I've never done before on my channel. I'm going to give you a reaction to a book. And I'm actually going to read you a part of it because this was a big wow moment for me. Now, to set the stage, I have to give you a little bit of background information rather than reading the whole book to you. But basically, um, the, the protagonist in this book had a vision that came to him several nights in a row, and the, each, the vision that came to him was identical each night. And as a result of that vision, he decided to travel to the Middle East and locate a man known as the Oracle. That's the title of the book, The Oracle. And he wasn't quite sure where to go or, or how to find the guy. He had to, he had to uh, talk to locals and try to figure it out. And eventually he ends up sitting at the feet of the oracle. And in the book, um, he, he had a vision early in the book where he saw seven doors. And he asked the oracle what the seven doors were, and the oracle said, you'll have to go through them to find out. And so as the book progresses, he has uh, visions where he goes through each of the seven doors, and then inside the, once he's inside that door, uh, he's led around by a person or an animal, and he sees more visions. And he writes down everything that he can, can remember about them. And then he goes to the oracle and asks him, what does this mean? So now having set that stage, when he went through the first door, he saw a stranger. And he, the stranger was writing things down and he wanted to know what that meant. So I'm going to read you. This is chapter 9. The chapters in this book are usually one, two, or three pages. They're not very long at all. This chapter is entitled, The Stranger. I returned to the mountaintop and found the oracle. It seemed as if he was waiting for me. In my vision, the man with the hooded robe who journeyed the world, who was he? In ancient times, he said, the land of Israel was described as flowing with milk and honey, a fertile and fruitful land. But when the Jewish people were driven into exile, the land withered away. Its forests disappeared. 
Its fields of grain and fruits became desert. Its hallowed cities stood as ghosts of their former glory or else lay in ruins. The promised land was now a barren, lifeless, parched, desolate horror of a land. And do you know who first prophesied of the land's desolation? Moses? Yes. In that same farewell address, he prophesied the future of the Jewish people and also of the land. And more than that, he spoke of a specific sign that would appear in the land. He said this, the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sickness which the Lord has laid on it, the whole land is brimstone, salt, and burning. It is not sown, nor does it bear, nor does any grass grow there, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. This, said the oracle, is the mystery of the stranger. The, the mystery of the stranger? that one day there will come a stranger who will journey from a faraway land, and when he enters the land he will bear witness of its barrenness, its devastation, and its desolation. Is it speaking of one specific person, or all who will come? Both. As with many scriptures, it has more than one level. In a general sense, it speaks of all who would come and be stunned by the land's utter desolateness. On the other hand, it speaks of one. The original word used in the prophecy to speak of a stranger, an alien, or a foreigner, the Hebrew word nakri, is singular. The man I saw in the vision, he was a stranger. He bore witness of the land's desolation. Yes, now, when would that stranger come, soon after the Jewish people were exiled from the land, or at a later time? A later time, I replied, because it would take time for a land that was once terrible, fertile, to turn into a total wasteland. Yes, said the oracle, and the prophecy itself specifies the time. It begins by saying that these things will take place in a generation or age that is Akharone. The word Akharone can speak of a coming generation or time, but it specifically means latter or last. So it would refer to the latter days, the end times, the last days. So the stranger will come to the land in the end times? The stranger will come before a specific end time event takes place, and that event is foretold in the same scripture passage. The Lord your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. So the prophecy of the stranger leads into the prophecy of the regathering of the Jewish people. The stranger's coming will be the sign that the exile of the Jewish people is about to end, and the scattered children of Israel are to return from the ends of the earth. So did the prophecy come true? It did, and just when the land's devastation was at its most extreme, the 19th century, he would come, as was prophesied, from a far land. From where? He would come from America, from San Francisco, from the ends of the earth. It would be from there that he would begin his journey, and since the prophecy required someone to bring forth words of testimony, so he would be a man of words, a writer. Have I heard of him? He is considered by many to be the father of American literature. Who was the stranger? The stranger was Mark Twain. Mark Twain, the one who wrote Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? I read his books in school. He's part of the mystery? He would become part. Twain was a skeptic and so the most powerful of witnesses, those who bear witness despite themselves. He was working as a journalist on the West Coast when he heard of a journey across the world on a steamship called the Quaker City. It would be among the first ships to undertake such a voyage. It would take months, bringing Twain to Europe, the Middle East, and finally to his ultimate destination, the land of Israel, the city of Jerusalem. And as the one appointed to bear witness, he would keep a notebook throughout the journey to record his observations. The pen and pad in my vision. Yes, according to the prophecy in Deuteronomy, he was to bear witness of the plagues of that land and all its sicknesses. Now listen to the words that Mark Twain would write concerning the plagues of that land. Rags, wretchedness, poverty, and dirt, lepers, cripples, the blind, 
to see the numbers of maimed, malformed, and diseased humanity that throng the holy places. According to Moses' prophecy, the stranger would describe the land as a desolation. He would say, the whole land is brimstone, salt. So Twain would bear witness. All desolate and unpeopled, miles of desolate country, the far-reaching desolation, the waste of a limitless desolation. According to an ancient prophecy, the stranger will say, all its land is a burning waste. Or in another translation, your land has become a scorching desert. So Twain would write, it is a scorching, arid, repulsive solitude. Such roasting heat, such oppressive solitude, and such dismal desolation cannot surely exist elsewhere on earth. Nowhere in all the waste around was there a foot of shade, and we were scorching to death. The prophecy of Deuteronomy foretells that the stranger will bear witness to the land as devoid of anyone to sow it. All its land is unsown. So Twain would bear witness of the land's absence of people. One may ride ten miles hereabouts and not see ten human beings. These unpeopled deserts, these rusty mounds of barrenness that never, never, never do shake the glare from their harsh outlines, there is not a solitary village throughout its whole extent, not for thirty miles in either direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. According to Moses, the stranger will bear witness of the land's inability to produce life, nor does it bear. The prophecy's use of the word samak specifically refers to sprouting, so the stranger will bear witness of the land's incapacity to sprout vegetation. So Twain would specifically bear witness of this phenomenon. The valleys are unsightly deserts fringed with a feeble vegetation, a desert paved with loose stones, void of vegetation, glaring in the fierce sun, this blistering, naked, treeless land. Even more specifically, the stranger, according to the ancient prophecy, will speak specifically of grass, or the absence of it. He will say, no grass grows in it. Another translation renders it, not even a blade of grass. So Twain would specifically speak of the grass, the ancient virtually word for word. No sprig of grass is visible. The words of Moses are coming out of the mouth of Mark Twain, as in my vision, they each wrote down the same word. Yes, said the oracle, the words of Moses from the mouth of Mark Twain, or the words of Mark Twain from the mouth of Moses in the form of prophecy. And yet there are words in that prophecy that one might never expect a stranger to utter. What do you mean? The scripture foretells that in that day it will be said the anger of the Lord burned against the land to bring upon it every curse which is written in this book. So, according to the prophecy, it will be said that a curse rests upon the land, the curse of God. One would not expect Mark Twain, a cynic, to speak of the curse of God, and yet this would be among the final words of his witness. Palestine sits in sackcloth and ashes. Over it broods the spell of a curse. His witness of the land would be summed up with one final question. Palestine is desolate and unlovely, and why should it be otherwise? Can the curse of the deity beautify a land? The stranger was to bear witness to that generation, so Mark Twain would send his words back to his native land. They would appear in articles across America and beyond. He would bear witness to multitudes of his generation and thus fulfill the prophecy. So he accomplished what he was appointed to do. What he was born to do, said the oracle. The stranger must come before the return of the Jewish people and when the land lies in desolation and utter hopelessness. Why utter hopelessness? It is hopelessness that sets the stage for the moving of God's hand and the impossible that sets the stage for a miracle. So the stranger would mark the ending of the land's devastation and lead into the beginning of its redemption and the return of the exiles. So did he? He did. When did Mark Twain come to the Holy Land? In the year 1867. And was that significant? We shall see, said the oracle. But that would be another mystery. He would reveal it in time, but there was another mystery to be opened. From the vision? Yes. Which mystery? The man with the measuring line. And that's the next chapter.
this book talks about prophecies that were made in the Old Testament and we're talking about the first five books the Pentateuch prophecies that were made by Moses that were fulfilled by human beings like Mark Twain thousands and thousands of years later and what's even more amazing is the Jews have a book they call the book of prayers and basically what it is is uh, uh, the scripture of the day that's what it is scripture of the day and what what was so remarkable to me was that when they read the scripture of the day it was perfectly aligned with the prophecy that came true on that day that very day this book is incredible it, it, it goes through the prophecies of the Old Testament and how those prophecies came true and the names of the men that were involved in bringing those prophecies to to fruition and these were not religious men they were not even believing men some of them some of them were but some of them were not and yet God's plan came true in every minute detail I'm gonna make a bold statement if you are an open-minded person that's critical if you're an open-minded person if you're someone who's willing to listen at evidence and consider it carefully then I'm gonna to say to you that you cannot read this book and come away convinced of anything but that God does exist that God is real and that the Bible is true so that's my challenge to you get a copy of the book you can probably get it at your local library you don't have to buy it I bought mine but you don't have to buy it you can get a copy at the local library read this book from cover to cover and if it doesn't convince you that God exists and that the Bible is true then I don't know what to tell you I can't see how you could possibly do that after reading this book that's my challenge to you today and my prayer is that you will be open-minded enough to get a copy of the book and to read it all the way through to the end and that you will listen carefully to what's written in that book and you will think about it and that when you come away from this book you will be a believer a believer in God a believer in Jesus Christ a believer in the Word of God that's my prayer and I pray that you'll share this information with all the people that you love and that they will have the same transformation from reading this book I will put the a link to the uh, to I'll put the name of the book and the author and a link to the, the Amazon copy of the book of course you can buy it other places as well but I'll put all of those in the description of my video this is the Vietnam era vet out